Good morning. Good morning. I'm Crystal. I'm Kevin. And you're gleaming with the grades. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back from the weekend. Yes, we survived. We're alive. It's Monday. No. <laughs> well, we're excited for Mondays, and we hope you're excited for Mondays too, because that means that we're back here with you with our daily devos. Yes, I'm excited because, like I said, um, as in my previous testimonies, well, testimony I've given before that uh, I've, I've had a lot of back pain. So every day now that I'm not in pain, it's a wonderful day. Hey, me too. My tooth is totally better, folks. You know, so I have a th I have something that I can praise the Lord on, not only for breath in my lungs, you know, but no pain. Yeah. How wonderful Praise that the is. Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, and the weather report for today. Uh, it is a good day. To, uh, good morning, and I would say early afternoon to do yard work. So if you have that grass that is growing up to your ankles, like we do, well, that your we shins, to, yes, your shins, you you can go out and cut it. It's today. a jungle out there. Yes. Okay. Um, can I go over to trivia real fast? Yes. Okay, so nobody answered the trivia questions, and it's probably my fault. No, it ain't nobody's fault. Maybe people just got busy. Maybe they forgot to check. I think maybe it's because of my wording. I don't think so. But the question for Friday's devotional was, which disciple was rumored to have received immortality? And who started the rumor? Would you like to tell them the answer, Ben? Yes. That person would be, John is a person who a rumor was started about he would not die. And the person who started that rumor was Peter. Now, and where did we find it? Woo! We found it in John. We found it in John. And we're going to go look exactly for where it is. But no one answered, so... Grandma Darla says, good morning. It's a jungle out there. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, it, it's not so much a jungle anymore, thankfully. Yes. But thanks to my, my, my father-in-law. He gave he loaned me a, a ride a lawnmower. Gotta have a deer. Gotta <laughs> have a John deer. But good morning, Mom. Good morning. We are just talking about the trivia. We're going over that question. Yes. It was John who was rumored to be immortal or that he wouldn't die. And it was Peter who started it. And you can find that in John. In John 21, 20 through 23. I'm going to go ahead and read it real quickly for you. So Peter turned around and saw the disciple Jesus loved following them. That disciple was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and asked, Lord, who is the one that's going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? If I want him, Jesus says, if I want him to remain until I come, Jesus answered, what is that to you? As for you, follow me. So this report spread to the brothers that the disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not tell him that he would not die, but if I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? So there you have it. That was the trivia question for Friday. Nobody got it on Facebook. Nobody got it on YouTube. So that $5 gift certificate will go into rotation, but that's not what we're giving away today, is it? No. What are we giving away today? What we're giving today is Good news t-shirt. Yay! If you get $5 on it. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fabian made a comment that was funny. Um, so, good news t-shirt. For those that answer correctly, trivia question today. One correct answer on Facebook. One correct answer on YouTube. First person to answer correctly wins. You can choose between coral and blue or black and white. Here's your question. Ready? Which disciple was a physician? This one is super easy. Which disciple, and not a disciple, it shouldn't be worded that because he wasn't a disciple. No, okay. Then what do we got to say? Which? Mm, gospel writer? Yes. Which gospel writer was a physician? That's the question. Which gospel writer was a physician? And there are three different places you can find this in the Bible. We just want one of them. 
-hmm. So, who was it? And where'd you find it in the Bible? Can you see the answers? <laughs> Don't cheat. Okay. All right. Uh, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know how on a, a game show, they really, they have the answers and they try to hide it from you, you know. No. They be holding them cards real close like this, don't they? And the Jeopardy question of the day is, and the Daily Double. <laughs> okay, so back on track now. We got our trivia question out there. Which gospel writer was a physician? And where did you find it in the Bible? No winners for Friday. Gonna rain later, so you better get your lawn mowed early. What else <laughs> do we have to talk about? Uh, nothing but the word. Did you have a story you wanted to share? Yes, it's going to go in with this. Okay. All right. Well, let's open up. Who want, You want to open? You want me to open? You want I, I open. Okay. Well, here we go. We're going to open in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day you have ordained for us. Thank you for, your, for the light, the energy, and life. Thank you for the breath in our lungs, Lord. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for your joy, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that... A, a fresh anointing fall on our heads, Lord, that you give us a palatable heart, a heart, Lord, that's softened and that is teachable, Lord, to your word. And let not our words, but your words be conveyed, Lord, and the message is received on fertile soil. And we ask these things, Lord, if you and give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In you, Jesus, we ask these. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Um, today's devotion is geared towards uh, women, but men, you can get this uh, also. And um, this is something what I have noticed in my life, that, and we see today, it's a lot of discrimination issues on the news pertaining to women. Now, I have a little story about it. And before I begin, how many of you know that um, the truth, not knowing the truth, you are susceptible to anything that someone says, you it's know, true. and not knowing the truth or seeking the truth. So once someone tells you something, you can be caught in a state of arrested development. And what's, what's even worse when receiving that false uh, doctrine or that, that lie, teaching. that teaching is that you get it into your, your spirit, man, your knower, and then you go and spread it you go and carry that bad news somewhere else, like a terrible gospel. I'm not gospel, but uh, gossip. Yeah. You know, like a gossip. Or a cold or a flu or something. Yes. And it will infect others. Because sometimes it ain't about you saying stuff. Sometimes your actions can convey that lie as well. So, you got to be careful. Yes. but and, um, and in that, now, the person who gave you the false doctrine, the false teaching, or the lie, you... And you held it for so long to be true, you cannot hold them accountable completely, just uh, solely. We are as much at fault also because we have been given a book. And we, we are given, and we are a literary driven society. It's not, you know, a bunch of illiterate people walking around like it was in the first century or even the the fifth century, we've, we've got a lot of people who know how to read and write now, so there's no reason why you can't go dig in yourself and see what that meal is made of, so to speak. Yes, so don't be really quick or swift to accept, readily accept something that uh, a person gives you. You know, uh, we can always go and find other sources to check. On. Yeah, you check us too. Yes, and the best source of anything, well, the uh, what's it called? The infallibility yeah, of right. the Lord yeah. is in the Bible. Infall infallible word, yeah. Yeah, I can spell that word, so I can say it. <laughs> okay, so, so today's reading is going to be on what? It's going to be on in Judges four, one through ten, and uh, Judges four, and one through ten. I have a little uh, what this devotion is going to be on. A little story. When I joined the military in 93, um, I was an infantryman. You know, I was a uh, tow missile gunner, a tank killer. And I remember asking my recruiter, and then in basic, I asked um, one of my drill sergeants, you know, why are there no females in the infantry? You know, uh, why? And he said, because of, um, 
It said that, let me see, try to put it in good words. Um, men um, can, will lose it pretty much. They, do, they can't stand seeing the sight of a woman being hurt on the battlefield. Um, and other things pertaining to that um, women just can't uh, handle it. Women can't handle being on the battlefield with the fighting and the gruesome and stuff like that. And so I took it as a growing, a young private and a soldier, I took it and ran with it. You know, women ain't supposed to be on the battlefield, blah, blah, blah. You know, but that was a lie. And I was, and I helped aid it in spreading that, that false uh, truth. And where can I? Falsehood. The falsehood. So we're going to read on something that's going to just totally destroy that. All right. I was going to read. You, you going to read it? Yes. And then I want you to read more about it. Okay. Okay. Scripture reads, the Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud had died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who resigned, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his forces was Sisera, mm -hmm. was, was Sisera, who lived in Harasheth. Harasheth. Hey, I got my eyeballs. It's, it's a whole lot better. Of the nations. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord because Jabin had 900 iron chariots and he harshly oppressed them mm. 20 years. Deborah, it's going to get good. Deborah, a woman who was a prophetess and the wife of Lapidoth, Lap was judging Israel at that time. It was her custom to sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah Ram Ram and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her for judgment. Man, all of Israel, the Israelites went to this woman for judgment. Don't, women, don't let them tell you you can't do what you know God has called you to do. Yes. Because women have been used by God since the beginning. Keep going. Yes. And in this time period in the, in, in the East, even now, women are viewed as property. You know, they're viewed as lesser, lesser people, you know. And so we see a whole nation is going to a one woman. Okay, let's move on. She summoned... Bar Barak, 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 son of Abinon from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, Hasn't the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you? Go deploy the troops on Mount Tabor and take with you 10,000 men from the, from the Naphtalites and Zeb Zebulunites. Then I will lure Sisera, commander of Javan's forces, his chariots, and his army at the Wadi Kishon to fight against you, and I will hand him over to you. She's repeating what the Lord has told him. For her. What? Well, yes. Yeah. Barak said to her, if you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So this commander of these troops is telling Deborah, a woman, hey, if you don't go with me to this battle, I'm not going to fight. So basically he's based... I think it was determined that she's the anointed one. So she's the one that hears from God. She's the prophet. She's the one with the direct connection. He is not willing to go into battle without her. Without a woman. And without he wants her, the anointing. Without... He yes. says he wants the anointing with him. So if you're not going, I'm not going. So right there, that just proves that... That lie that I was told when I was a young private in the military. A woman cannot handle uh, the, the, battle. the battle, the, the intense the intensity on the battlefield. And men cannot see the sight or stand the sight of a woman being injured in battle. The truth just set me free. There you go. She said, I will go with you. Well, I will go with you, she said. But you will receive no honor on the road you are about to take. But the Lord would sell Sisera into a woman's hand. So Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh. Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh. 10,000 men followed him, and Deborah also went with him. If that's not a motivation, you know, um, 
I don't know what is. We're yeah. told we're told so many times that what women can't do and what men are so strong and tough, but we see in historical documents, we see in the Lord's word, we see in the truth that <laughs> the men want seek the woman for advice. They seek they sought a woman for Not judgment. Not just that, but then it tells it says basically because he wanted her to go. He didn't take the Lord's word as the Lord's word. He didn't trust it. So he became dependent on her. And because he became dependent on her, she was given the victory, not him. So, and, I mean. And in her victory, there were great songs. This is in this is written in history, in, in actually history books. Yeah, there's, there's sources outside the Bible that speak about Deborah and the song of Deborah. And, and so. And can you read that? Um. In the, the Bible. Yeah, you know, you reading this, I don't want to know what happens next. I'm hey. gonna have to go back and read. Oh, I read nice. this I read this book just a couple months ago, but you know, you read so much, it, it kinda kinda forget it. You kinda forget it, yeah. Unfortunately. Yes. Okay, so out of the Bible dictionary here that we always use, um, I looked up Deborah and we found some interesting facts about her. The song of Deborah uh, celebrates the victory of Deborah and Barak over Sisera and is one of the oldest pieces of literature in the Old Testament. It's, key. it's pretty amazing. The old, One of the oldest pieces of literature in the Old Testament is the song of when a woman and a man went to battle and won. So not a man, but a woman and a man. Yes. And it says that this poem is very important, not only for a contemporary description of the historical situation and theological perspective of the period, but for the form and style of poetry and language of the period as well. So this po uh, poem and song isn't just studied because of the facts that are within it of the battle, but it's also studied because it helps historians understand the language and type of poetry that was used during this time. So that's it's pretty interesting that this song is studied for people to understand the culture and the you know uh, yeah. written languages of that of that time. Yes, and in sharing these these uh, verses of scripture, I hope that uh, it sparks a little joy in your day knowing that God chooses women to do great things as well, and that you are not overlooked or just property. God sees you. As much as God uses men in, in his kingdom to do great things, he also used women. Yep. Who were the first evangelists? Women. Yeah. Mary went to the tomb. And He's risen. It was a Nobody fun. believed her. No. Nope. But she still tried to give him the good news. What about the woman at the well? Yeah. She can be considered one of the first evangelists. Yeah, that's the, true too. She went to her, her town and this man told news me everything I've ever done. Of the Messiah. Yeah. Yes. Once again we see women. So so don't discount yourselves, women, in your workplace, in your homes, in your in society. You are you are equal. You are a co heir of the kingdom of God. You are worthy. You are and worthy. you are, as we have titled this message, Women of Worth. You know, and um, I really would like to dive into something to where like, um, you know, if women can't be pastors, then why allow them to go to seminary school? If, they, if you don't want them behind the pulpit, then why even uh, equip them? I mean, we, we, we don't really want to go there any further. No. You know, that's mm -hmm. But just some, just a little nugget. It doesn't make sense. Well, yeah, That's plenty true. of righteous, uh, intelligent, strong women of God in the Bible. And we just want to encourage all the women out there today. And men, if Stand you up. have believed this false teaching that women are inferior, you know, it's time to lay that down. Lay it down. And, and you know, I know there are some study Bibles out there that have that woven throughout in the footnote sections um i would i would
would suggest maybe trying to find a different study Bible if I would be so bold to suggest such a thing. Because if you know the teaching you're receiving is not accurate, you don't keep teaching yourself that, you know? Yes. Now, we know as Christians that he is greater than I. That God's will, that the Lord, Savior, King, Jesus is greater than us. So he which is greater than us placed a woman in power to do great things for his kingdom. He did not say, oh, you're too weak. He placed a woman to judge his people, a whole nation, all the tribes. He placed them, he placed a woman as a queen to deliver his people from captivity. He's talking about Esther. He's talking now. about Esther, yeah. a queen. Wow. Great women in history. But yet somehow we've lost that in our pride and say that, oh, women needs to be down here. You know, they can't do anything. We, you know, the word of God doesn't flow through a woman. We can't hear God's word from her lips. You know, let's stop that teaching and women rise up and understand your worth. Your worth that God sees you and your identity. Amen. In him. Amen. Well, in that, if you have anything else there? I do not have anything else. If you all have a need for prayer this morning, we would be happy to pray for you, with you, stand in agreement with you. If you're here watching now and you have a prayer request, please type it in. If you are watching and you're not here live with us, type it in. We'll stop everything to pray with you. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so just a reminder, just in case somebody's typing in a prayer request right now, just a reminder, we have a trivia question today. The trivia question is, which gospel writer was a physician? And where can you find that in the Bible? Just three places. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and the winner of the trivia gets a, good news, t-shirt. Choose between orange or black. So, mm -hmm. there's no prayer requests. No prayer requests? Well, we'll go ahead and close. Father God, I thank you for this time that we've been able to spend with one another. I thank you, Lord, for encouraging every woman today. And I thank you for breaking men free from the bondage of this false teaching that women are inferior or that women cannot serve the church in the same capacity as a man. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for creating me to be a strong woman of God. And I pray that you would encourage and embolden every other woman believer to preach the gospel and share the gospel without abandon and with a boldness and ferocity for your kingdom. Lord, I thank you for my husband. I thank you for his, his uh, willingness to uplift us women and strengthen us and inspire us to keep moving forward in our calling. I thank you for my family. Lord, I pray for John Bailey. I pray that you would just bring healing to his lungs, Lord God, his diaphragm. I just call all those cells to replicate, duplicate, and and do what they're supposed to do in Jesus' mighty name. And I curse all trauma and all trauma cells with trauma in his body by the authority of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for my friend Amanda. I thank you that you would give her strength, that whatever she's walking through, Lord God, you would meet her where she is and give her encouragement and just strengthen her and comfort her during her time. Lord God, I pray for those who may be grieving lost today, that you would meet them where they are and bring them uh, some joy and some comfort and some strength, that as they mourn, Lord, they would remember that no one has suffered as you have, Jesus, and God, no one has mourned as you have over your son. So I just pray that they would see that you're right there with them in the midst of their mourning, Lord. I thank you for each and every person that's watching right now. I pray a special blessing over them. May you turn your face towards them, God, and pour out a blessing that they cannot contain. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. We pray y'all have a blessed day. We love you. We love you. Bye. Bye.